Welcome back to another interactive notebook flip through. This is my third unit, which is triangles. So I believe that this is the first time that I am filming a video of an interactive notebook flip through for a unit that I'm currently teaching. This is my notebook for the school year. I'm just sharing because it's pretty rainbow, bright colors, everything that I love. So the way that I set this unit up is I've combined what could have been two separate units and what in the past I have done as two separate units. So I've combined the congruent triangle proofs unit with the triangle properties unit, mainly because I would rather my students take a test on the unit where it's or where I'm able to focus more on the triangle properties, which is their strength rather than the triangle proofs, which is typically a weakness. So if you're a geometry teacher, you know, this is probably one of the least favorite topics for all of us because it is a struggle. Anyway, let's jump in. This is where we currently are. We are currently working on the congruent triangle proofs, but I will go through this notebook to show you the full picture of everything that we do. So we start out with corresponding parts and this actually builds on our last lesson previously which was congruence and here we did match up the corresponding parts but here it was a lot more focused on matching up the corresponding parts and just looking at how the order of the vertices matter. As far as grading goes though, I tell my students if you have them in the wrong order, as long as you've identified the line segment or angle correctly, I'm not going to take points off. But here I do show them like this is how you want to do it. That way when they're reading questions, it helps them answer certain questions. So we go over the corresponding parts and then this is like a booklet page. On the inside, I give them some different triangles I give them given information and then I have them mark up the diagram. They actually have to practice marking the diagram. Even today I had students asking me how do I mark the diagram and it's like we've been doing this for a week but I, I don't say that to them. I, I just show them how to mark the diagram again. So we go over the given and then I have them start practicing finding vertical angles and those sides that are reflexive to each other. So this is where we start. Um, basically here we are already doing miniature proofs they just don't realize that yet then our next unit is on the congruent triangle postulates and theorems so we have you know side 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 angle side etc this is a fun foldable where they can see what it is on the outside on the inside it explains it and then on the inside inside we have practice problems so we get to practice, again, looking for vertical angles, reflexive sides, but then identifying if the triangles are congruent by side, 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 angle, side, or maybe they're not congruent, and then we get to talk about ASS and how that does not work. I actually found a video that I really loved, I will link below, that showed animations for these, and so it shows them why angle side, side does not work. I know a lot of geometry teachers have done different like discovery activities where students figure these out. I would love to do that, but quite frankly, we don't have the time and I don't have the patience. So I go over this with them and then I really love the video because the animations show and explain like visually for students things that I cannot with, you know, just having a smart board. So that was super helpful. So we actually started congruent triangle proofs yesterday and I used a lesson idea from geometrycoach.com. I'm going to link that below as well. So at each table I gave students a paper and I have it laminated so I can use it again next year. And then I gave them like printouts of the UNO cards and I again got this all from geometrycoach.com. I had to make up some of my own though so that I had a different proof at all seven tables. And I said to students, you're given this card, let's say it was like the red six. I gave them between four and six other UNO cards and I said and then you're trying to prove this other card let's say it was like a blue skip. So they have to arrange their cards in order to get them from the red six to the blue skip. There were different things that they could have done in different orders. There were things that they could have skipped altogether and so we got to talk about First of all, reasoning how it is that we got from the original card to what they were trying to prove and if there were different ways to go about it and we were really just focused on logical thinking. 
Um, I went around each table individually and just checked on their work, talked to them about why does this work and how do you know that it works. In the future, what I would love to do is have students write down like an actual proof of it on like construction paper and let the other students in the class kind of walk around and see what different groups did and see if they would do anything differently and maybe like have them put a post-it at the table so that they could see that. So that was the first half of class yesterday. Then we went on to interpreting givens. So I have a cheat sheet that I made for them and it has three ways to prove that sides are congruent and four ways to prove angles are congruent. So I go over all of this with them, like this is what the given looks like. This is how you mark your diagram. This is what your statement would look like and this is what your reason is. So they have this to go through when they are working on proofs and it helps them just know what to do. If they get stuck, they have like a safety net. I actually put my pages in my notebook this year a little bit out of order. Um, I put this one in and then put the interpreting givens behind it, but it's fine. So then we did congruent triangle proofs. I have just like really brief notes because they've seen proofs before. This is the third time now that we're doing them. We did algebraic proofs at the beginning. It was like the first thing we do of the school year. Then we did line and angle proofs, started at algebraic and then did it without algebra and now they're seeing it again. So I don't have to explain to them the two column proofs. I do still need to remind them that they have to number both sides. Um, but now this is something that they're kind of used to. I have to emphasize with them that they need to mark their diagrams because they still want to skip that. And I just give them notes that you're starting with a given, you're going to interpret it, mark your diagram, and then you are going to, after your given has been exhausted, look for reflexive sides and angles, vertical angles. So the notes here are really brief. I just remind them that they really need to be marking their diagram and just kind of give them an idea of what to do each time. They start with a given, when that's exhausted, they look at the diagram, and then when they're done, they're going to prove that the triangles are congruent. What I did yesterday, actually, when we were working on interpreting givens that really helped, was I highlighted for the reflexive sides, I highlighted one of the triangles yellow, and then the other triangle blue. And so that one line in the middle where the triangles share a side, it turns green. And so I told them it was a magic trick, but then they're able to see visually that this one side is in both triangles. And so that's why it's congruent to itself. Now in class today, we finished up those notes and then I gave them triangle proof cards. I will link a video below that I explain how that activity works, but basically, the most common activity for proofs is giving students like strips of paper that have statements and reasons and they have to arrange them into a proof. And I did that with students for a couple years and you know what they learned from it? Nothing. It doesn't really help them. It helps with the sequencing, but really we got that with that Uno game that we did. Um, so I like to have them try to work on these proofs. There's eight of them. And then I tell them there are hints at your table. Every table gets a set of cards where they have to flip the card over and on the back there might be statements that are there, there might be reasons that are fill in the blank, there might be some text that explains different things about the proof. So I found that works a lot better than just giving them a bunch of pieces and having them have to arrange them. So flipping back to last year's notebook, our next lesson will be CPCTC proofs. The corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. I have them basically just build on what they already know and we will do proof cards with this as well over the next few days after this. Then we get to move on to the triangle properties and by this point we're all kind of done with proofs. Like I, we're in the middle right now so um, this will be next week. We get to go on to the triangle angles. I teach the interior and exterior angles of triangles in the same day. When I teach them interior angles, I will start by taking a piece of paper like this one and I'll put it into my paper cutter and cut just a straight line here so that it's a triangle with a right angle. Then I'll take that triangle to the front of the room and I will show my students that if I tear off the three angles, I have them labeled ABC, I can arrange them all together, the flat sides all touching, and they will make a straight line. And so that's illustrating that triangles, their angles add up to 180 degrees. 
Usually that's not new information for students, but seeing a visual helps. And some of them, I know that they've learned it at some point, but they, they may have forgotten by now. So we do that here, and then we get into the exterior angle theorem. That one, I don't show them like a paper cutout for, but you could kind of do the same thing. I have in the past, actually, I remember what I did. I traced the marker, I traced the triangle on my marker board, and I drew a line out to the front, and then I tore off the two remote interior angles and showed how they fit into the exterior angle that was left on the board. So we practice with the exterior angle theorem, then we prove the triangle um, sum theorem here with a fill in the blank proof. I usually don't do like a whole thing of special practice on this because it's pretty straightforward, but it helps sometimes to do that. I like to actually leave that for like sub work or something. Then the next page that we have is the triangle inequality theorem. This I like to do hands on. I give my students a few different sets of numbers and these are all representative of explorigons that I have. So I have explorigons put into little Ziploc bags ready to go for students so I can hand each group a Ziploc bag. And this tells them to connect or try to connect three pieces to make a triangle. So I have their actual measurements written out here, but I also have the different colors of the explorigons. So what students are able to do is snap them together if they make a triangle. If not, they won't, but they're keeping record here of whether or not it makes a triangle. Then we look at the sum of the two shorter sides and compare it to the largest side. And so there we're able to determine that the sum of the two small sides needs to be greater in order for it to form a triangle. Now triangle inequality theorem, usually you see it taught where you do all three combinations and you want to see what works, but really it's the two smallest sides being larger than the third that will make or break the whole thing. So I kind of stick to that. I do show them comparing all three sides, but I, I tell them let's stick to this one because it'll uh, go a little bit quicker. After that, on the next page, we have some practice here. And then we do the side angle relationship. This is a really short lesson here. I mean, we just look at a diagram and we say, where's your longest side? Where's your biggest angle? We take note that they're directly across from each other. And then we do some practice problems. I feel like side angle relationship doesn't come up so often on our Regents exam at the end of the year anymore. So I don't get too crazy with that. Then our next lesson is isosceles and equilateral triangles. So we do notes, we go over the vocabulary, base angles theorem, and we have some practice problems. And then we go over the equilateral triangles. Equilateral triangles are not exciting because all the sides are equal, all the angles are 60. So there, it just feels like there's not quite as much you can do with those. So we do mostly focus on the isosceles triangles. And then we do a proof for the base angles theorem at the end of the lesson. Okay, then we have mid segments and medians. I teach them on the same day. These are like these last few topics right here after I saw these triangles. They're not regularly or heavily tested, so I will show them and we kind of go through a little bit quicker through them because like I said, they're not very often showing up on the test. And if they are, it's like one question, but we have um, mid segments and the mid segment theorem on one page. And then on the next page, we go into medians and the concurrency of medians theorem. So I teach all that in one lesson because it fits. And then I will have our final lesson on the points of concurrency of the triangles. So we do talk about the centroid again with the medians, but at this point they know and can apply the theorem. But we also talk about the in-center, circumcenter, and orthocenter. Again, this is not often or heavily tested in our curriculum, so I don't really need to go so in depth, but I do show them. I do show them where the different points um, could lie on the triangle if it's different for the acute right or obtuse triangles. And I include any of the theorems, like what's equidistant from that point of concurrency or what have you. So that is the entire unit. So there's a huge emphasis on proofs and we spend lots of time on them, like three days for congruent triangle proofs about, and then 
at least two days on CPCTC, but if my students are struggling still with just congruent triangle, we will spend an extra day with CPCTC since it's reinforcing congruent triangles, but also just adding in that like one, sometimes two or three extra steps. So that's the bulk of it. And then for isosceles and equilateral triangles, what I've been doing is incorporating an extra day of practice because of that topic, there's actually a lot going on there. Even though I said that, you know, equilateral triangles are not exciting, but there's a lot of different ways to apply it. So um, I will have a day of review on that and incorporate just some extra practice for triangle sum theorem and the exterior angles. I have everything linked below that I do currently use and have used in the past for this unit. So feel free to look there if you're looking for additional resources. And that is everything for this video. If you have any questions, please let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.